Hello again, welcome to The Point, my weekly show where I talk about the hottest talking points in video games. This week, if Microsoft backtrack anymore, they really will be launching the Xbox One. <laughs> hey, like, like the first one. <laughs> oh. In the biggest reversal of policy since the Catholic Church condemned child molestation, Microsoft have decided that every unique selling point in the Xbox One is actually a load of bollocks. Back on May 21st, it seemed like they had it all figured out, displaying the sort of hubris you'd struggle to see outside of the world's biggest penis convention. Microsoft spent the first half of the year telling gamers they were wrong about their concerns while preaching the gospel according to Matrick. Oof. Yeah. But once Sony used E3 to respond to gamers concerned over used games, pricing, always on internet connections and indie developer support, Microsoft had been in policy free fall, reversing everything that made the Xbox One unique. On June 19th, they reversed their policy on used games, while announcing an always on internet connection would no longer be required. On July 1st, they reversed their policy on employing Don Matrick. On July 24th, they decided to allow indie developers to self-publish after all. Last week, they tried to sneak out the fact that the headset was in fact going to be bundled, and then yesterday they announced that Kinect would no longer be required to use the system. If this momentum continues, the console might have a bloody HD DVD drive in it by the time it hits store shelves. We don't know what the Xbox One is anymore, and Microsoft certainly haven't got a clue. They're like a cheating husband groveling for forgiveness at the feet of the gaming community. And considering how taken for granted we've been of late, it's nice to remind these folks that we're the ones that hold the keys to the console war. I have a problem with the lack of understanding of who actually plays games. From my time working in games retail, I think I've got a pretty good handle on it, or at the very least I've got a theory. To me, the games industry can be split into three different markets. You've got the casual gamers, families, parents, children, people who buy a Wii U, a handful of games a year, and Hello Kitty bags for their DSs. This is Nintendo's domain, and Sony and Microsoft's attempt to get a look in have been largely unsuccessful. On the opposite side of the spectrum, you have the enthusiast or hardcore gamer. This is us, the folks who read about games in our spare time, who buy dozens of games a year, and experiment a lot more with the types of games we play. And lastly, there's the average Joe or Jane, what I like to call the softcore gamer. They're kind of like the hardcore crowd, but they just don't let it go in the whole way. Your friend who buys Call of Duty, Halo, the odd sports game and so on. This lot don't buy many games, but they buy them en masse, ensuring that the year's biggest shooter sells tens of millions and sports franchises can keep knocking out annual releases. When Nintendo opened up the casual market with the Wii and DS, both Microsoft and Sony scrambled to get a piece of the pie. The demands of any growth industry, especially one like games which has been consistently expanding for over two decades, means that these companies are always trying to increase their market. Market. But there are too many barriers between these consoles and the casual market. Cost of the console, the complexity of the controllers, catalogs full of violent games. So both have had to look elsewhere and what's interesting is how Sony made an obvious play for the hardcore gamers while Microsoft have attempted to pull in the softcore. At the reveal event it was sports, TV, Call of Duty, Madden, FIFA, Steven Spielberg. While Sony on the other hand addressed the concerns of hardcore gamers and showed off some really interesting games including a suite of indie titles. And here's the kicker. The hardcore market market is not the be-all and end-all of the console war. There are a hell of a lot more people who will buy a console to play the odd shooter, but those people follow in our wake. We are the early adopters, we set the pace, and right now, four times as many of us are pre-ordering PlayStation 4s over Xbox Ones. There isn't much to split these two consoles. We've basically hit hardware parity, they both have Blu-ray drives, they're both black, and there's less exclusive games than ever before. So if by next year Softcore Joe decides he wants to jump on the next generation bandwagon and get himself a new console, and then four times as many of his friends are playing on the PlayStation 4, well, it's a bit of a no-brainer. He's going to want to play online and swap games with his friends. Essentially, the decision has been made for him. While Microsoft attempted to coddle the regular Joe gaming market, they took enthusiast gamers for granted. They forgot about their bread and butter. They forgot that this industry is powered by millions of folks like you and I, people who play games most days of the week, who read news articles and watch dumb internet videos on sites like this. We take out the pre-orders, we're the early adopters, we decide who wins this battle, and now Microsoft will do just about anything to get back in our good books. So, what's next on the flip-flop chopping block? A version with a Kinect, perhaps? Yeah, probably. They've just put the headset back in, you don't need Kinect to use the console anymore, and they need to shave about 100 bucks off the sticker price. Watch this space.